Hello, this is Paul Edmonds and welcome to another video here at finishyoursong.com. In this video I want to look at how to eliminate the repetitive part of setting up a new project. Back when Cubase was an Atari based program, it required that you had a default arrangement on your boot disk, which could either be an empty arrangement or would load with the tracks you typically used in a few other settings. Cubase today offers us that same facility, although we can pick up a template that suits us from the project assistant that pops up when Cubase starts or when you pick New Project from the file menu. A project template contains all the items that you would want and you can have more than one if it suits your needs. Any project template you create will appear in the project assistant in whichever category you pick or in the more option if you don't specify otherwise. You just have to decide what constitutes your starting point for each project. For me, I like to get the tracks ordered on screen in a particular sequence, which is a hangover from my days with Cubase on the Atari, where I would have the MIDI tracks at the top of the project window and the audio tracks underneath. So nowadays, running down the list, I normally have bass, drums, additional percussion, keyboards, guitars and vocals at the bottom. We used to run all the outputs from tape and synths through a SEC 18 into 8 into 2 mixer, so it's natural for me to follow the instrument tracks with my group tracks and stereo mix. With the FX returns, now known as the FX channels in Cubase after that, Bearing in mind that the mixer view in Cubase turns your project list through 90 degrees, that offers me a virtual recreation of a layout I'm familiar with and comfortable with. Which is a point I was making in the last video. I'm not suggesting that this is the way to set things up, just that it's the way that works for me and that you need to find what works for you. Given that we can end up with far more tracks on screen than you will fit, I create a folder track and a group channel for each of my primary groups, colour coded using my custom colour scheme that I sorted out in the last video. To do this, you go to Project, Add Track, Folder, and name it Bass Guitar. And then from our colour scheme, you name it and so on. Unfortunately, you can't add multiple folders at once in Cubase, so you have to add them one at a time. The same isn't true of the group channels. I don't colour code the group channels with the instrument colour so that I have a strong visual reminder that what I do on that channel potentially affects multiple instruments. To add a group channel you come down to here and you can add the number that you want which in this case will be 6. They come in a group tracks folder and we can highlight them using shift and then we go up here to the color and group and WAP and we just double click to rename them. Using folders enables me to quickly fold and unfold those tracks helping me to navigate around the project window easily. Any tracks that are created in the folder should inherit the folder colour. Voila. But tracks that you drag into the folder will need to be recolored. We open the mixer. When I have these tracks, I route their output to the relevant group channel. The outputs from the group channel I'm going to reroute to a new 
group channel. I'm going to create that I'm going to call stereo mix. And you do this by highlighting the tracks you want. You come up to here and you do Shift and Alt and then you drag and you reroute them all at once. Stereo mix. I'm also going to add a couple of effects channels to the template. I'm not going to put a lot of plugins into the template but there are a few that are my go-to units and Reverb is one of them. So I'll put the red line reverb on this first channel. Couldn't find it then. Make sure the output is set to maximum and the mix is set to full wet. Highlight these two and colour them for an effects channel. And highlight that and colour it for reverb. Give it a slightly darker colour. So there we have our two and these I will route Shift Alt and then drag it to the stereo mix. As I work on headphones a lot when I'm working away from home, I'll insert the red line monitor onto the stereo mix. This enables me to recreate the effect of having two speakers when I'm actually working on headphones as it allows a blending between the two channels rather than getting the strict separation of left and right that occurs when you're using headphones. I also like to put the T-Rax metering plug in on there so that I can see what the output is like both for level and overall balance. I'm not big on plugins across the master bus but I do put Cytomics the glue which is an SSL clone well, they probably won't like me saying that across the final output using the cast, catch the peaks mastering preset this isn't to actually add any compression it's just to avoid clipping when I'm mixing and I'll adjust the th threshold and makeup to suit the track as I'm going. I don't really want to use any makeup, I don't want to be boosting the levels. What I want to do is adjust the threshold so that I'm just getting a little bit of movement when the song is at its loudest or when I'm getting snares really cutting through. I don't like to run the output too hot. A mix down, you want to leave enough headroom for the mastering engineer to have something to work with, so slamming the mix isn't something I do. I don't put a dithering plugin on here either, as I will print the mix at the resolution it was recorded at and only apply dithering later at the mastering stage. One final thing I'll do now is reduce the channels by 6 dB. Got to link the channels together and pull them down to 6 dB and then unlink them. The reason for this is as the mix develops you'll want to turn things up and down and if say you want to turn the drums up once you've mixed in the rest of the instruments 
if you work that way around, it's nice to have some up in hand. With the empty project now set up, it's time to save it. So you select File, Save as Template. Make sure you have the inspector here open at the bottom. And choose what category this will go into. And I'm going to put it in production. If you don't, it will appear under more. And you enter a description in the template box and OK. And that's it. You now have a saved template ready to start your next project without all that setting up. That's it and we'll see you next time.